Hello, friends. It's Talking Heads of Atascacita. My name is Amy Bridwell, and I'm on the phone with Monsignor James Golosinski. Monsignor, last week when I was at Mass, we read about the Samaritan woman at Jacob's Well, and I've wanted to ask you all week whether or not you mentioned that in your homily. Yes, I did. But let's begin uh, with our usual prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Mm-hmm. And direct us, O Lord, in all our actions, that every work and prayer may begin with thee, and through thee be successfully completed through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Do you know what a Samaritan was? A uh, Samaritan, I was, a Samaritan is a separated Israelite. Am I close? You're in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> Where was Samaria? Was it north? No, it was in the middle. Okay. Galilee was in the north. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what was in the south? Uh, Jerusalem. And... Judea. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Judea. Mm-hmm. Today, that's often called the West Bank. Okay. Now, everybody knows about wise King Solomon, right? Mm-hmm. And how wise King Solomon went bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, prosperity, wealth, uh, corrupted him. Mm-hmm. And by the end of his life, he was very, very tyrannical. Mm-hmm. And uh, his death was kind of around uh, 900 B.C. And as he became more and more tyrannical, uh, opposition was growing. He appointed one of his sons named Roboam Mm -hmm. to succeed him. And uh, Roboam called in some of the old wiser men and asked for their advice about how to govern. Mm -hmm. And the older men said, you got to lighten up. Mm -hmm. People can't take anymore. Then he called in the young, let's call them Turks. He called in the young Turks and asked them, how should I govern? And they said, pour it on. Mm -hmm. And then he called in representatives of the people and informed them that he was going to be tougher than his father Solomon had had Mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. And that caused uh, despair and it caused a division. Division, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ten ten northern tribes, the ten northern tribes separated from the the rule of the house of David. Only uh, Judah and the small tribe of Benjamin, which was adjacent to it, and to north of to the, only they remained under the rule of Jerusalem. And this began what some people call the period of the two kingdoms, mm-hmm. the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, or Israel and Judah, mm-hmm. or Judea. Okay. I think what happened was that the, uh, the ten northern tribes that, uh, that, that succeeded, uh, tried to uh, claim that they were the real, uh, the real people of God mm-hmm. by appropriating the name uh, Israel. Okay. Mm-hmm. And as time passed, they, uh, of course, went farther and for, oh, they established uh, they established their own temple mm. because uh, it, it wouldn't have worked if they didn't have their own temple mm-hmm. because. It, uh, Good Jews had to uh, celebrate the Passover. That's right. Where where was the temple? Jerusalem. Oh, okay. I mean, the original. You see, mm-hmm. after they had separated, if the people were going to uh, celebrate uh, the Passover in mm-hmm. Jerusalem every year, mm-hmm. well, that would have been a problem. That and so, mm-hmm. so to uh, eliminate that problem. They then established their own temple. I understand. And by the time of our Lord, uh, it was uh, the temple was on a on a mountain, Mount uh, uh, Samaria. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot happened in between, mm-hmm. as they went farther and farther into error and corruption. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the the, the the bad king and bad queen. Mm-hmm. Jezebel, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, now they were of the northern kingdom. 
Okay. A lot of people, they don't realize this distinction they don't, when they care about uh, Jezebel, they don't realize that she was the queen of, of, the, of the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. And they kept going farther and farther and farther astray. Mm -hmm. And to the east, and, and the Tigris Euphrates with the river valley, there then arose a, a great power, mm -hmm. named the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. What was their capital? I don't know. Nineveh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. uh, Jonah was sent to the Ninevites to, to call them to repentance. Mm -hmm. Well, they... Uh, were expanding, and they expanded to the west, all the way to uh, the Mediterranean coast, and they destroyed the northern kingdom. Hmm. And then they turned their attention to the southern kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, and they put Jerusalem to the siege. But something happened. Uh, it seemed like it was an epidemic that broke out among the Assyrian uh, soldiers that and put Jerusalem to the siege, and so they lifted the siege, and they went away, and that's how the southern kingdom was spared from uh, Assyrian rule. Mm -hmm. Now, but the Assyrians were uh, ruling uh, in the north, and with, and they had a policy that they would, when they conquered a territory, they wouldn't just leave the population that survived you know, the invasion and the war. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't just leave it in place. Mm -hmm. They would practice what we would today call ethnic cleansing. They mm -hmm. would move a large percentage of that people and scatter them mm -hmm. throughout the rest of the of the Assyrian Empire. Mm -hmm. And then they would encourage other uh, the other peoples to move into uh, into that vacuum. Mm -hmm. And what happened then over the years was two things. Both of them bad as regards in the, in the eyes of the people of the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, there was intermarriage. Mm -hmm. So they became sort of a hybrid people, a half-breed people. Mm -hmm. And that's, one, that's something mm -hmm. that the, the people of uh, the southern kingdom despised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they started mixing in paganism. Mm -hmm which is the second reason. Mm -hmm. And the animosity was really deep, mm -hmm. deep. Remember how when uh, Jews would, uh, uh, over time, uh, over time, people from the South moved up into Galilee, mm -hmm. like Joseph and Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a migration from the, from the South. And here, the, the Samaritan territory was between Galilee and its population of uh, descendants of Judah and Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the South, the kingdom uh, of rather Judea, mm -hmm. and they, people passing back and forth between the two regions, but uh, have to pass through Samaritan territory. Mm -hmm. Remember one time, our Lord and the apostles, and they they were on their way to Jerusalem, and uh, they were treated rudely by these uh, Samaritans and James and John. They wanted our Lord to call down destruction from heaven mm -hmm. upon them. Mm -hmm. They were like Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the Jews would reach, as, after they had passed through the territory, when they reached the border, they'd, take, they'd sit down, take off, their, uh, take off their footwear, and then shake it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a sign of contempt. Mm -hmm. They weren't taking even Samaritan dust with right, them in right. their, on their sandals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the animosity is very, very deep. Mm -hmm. And our Lord and the apostles are on the way back to Galilee. And they're passing through Samaritan territory, and they come to Sychar, where there was Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. And the apostles go into town. And this is something that is really mysterious to me. The apostles went into town to buy food. Mm -hmm. And that's why our Lord, was, remember, was there at Jacob's well by himself when the Samaritan woman comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the well, you know, in our country, farmers settled on their land, and uh, farmers had their own wells, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Up in our old hometown you know, in Central Texas, mm -hmm. uh, we had wells. Yeah. We, when, we, when we were kids and we'd go up there to visit, you know, we, we, we got a kick out of this, you know, <laughs> pranking the well and bringing the water up out of the well next mm -hmm. to the house. Yes. <laughs> well, you see, and much of the world, uh, people lived close by, close to one another, 
in tight knit villages for security's sake. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have their own individual wells. Mm-hmm. I read once that when St. John Bellini, the carrier of ours, went to ours, it consisted of 50 households. Mm-hmm. I was reading something the other day about this American, it's on the internet, about this American Army unit in, uh, in Belgium mm-hmm. and talking about how they were on this hill and in one direction they could look and they see this little village and in another direction they see another little village. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These people were clustered together. That's the way, that was the pattern of our ancestors mm-hmm. in uh, Europe, that they were clustered together in little towns, little mm-hmm. villages, and then their fields were just scattered around on the 360 degrees mm-hmm. uh, of, the, uh, of the circumference of the town. Right. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, uh, this woman comes out in the middle of the day. Now, mm-hmm. normally, now this, when I was in Korea, I got water from a well. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I, this well, uh, just a little bit, a short distance from me, uh, it, it, there were 50 partners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, in the morning, the fellow who was the overseer of the well, he would come out, unlock it and take the cover off and the people from the neighborhood would come and they would get the well, the mm-hmm. water out of the well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they'd do it again in the evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was no cover there at, at Jacob's well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the woman came out alone. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason why she came out alone was she was an outcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, it came out in the middle of the day when it was hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's better to come in the cool of the morning and the evening. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, uh, she comes and our Lord is there and he asked her to, to give him a drink. Mm-hmm. And she was shocked mm-hmm. in two ways. The first way was he spoke to her. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Jews did, did not speak to Samaritans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And secondly, he asked her for a drink, mm-hmm. which meant that she would then have to hand him her bucket, mm-hmm. and then he would put his lips mm-hmm. to uh, her unclean bucket right. to drink water from. Mm-hmm. So these these are two shocking things to her. Mm-hmm. And anyway, and they then says to her that if she knew who she was speaking with, she would ask him for living water. Mm-hmm. And you know the rest of that. Mm-hmm. They get into this. Uh, who drinks this water will be thirst again. The people who drink the water I give will never reach eternal life, etc., etc., etc. And so she says, well, well, give me always this water mm-hmm. so I won't have to keep coming out mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And that's when he uh, then starts talking about what leads him up to the fact that he was uh, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. But he tells her, oh, she, she says that, uh, uh, he tells her to go get her husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what happened then? What, what did she tell him? I do. I, I don't have a husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he kind of says ruefully, well, you know, you're sort of truthful. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've had five, and this mm-hmm. one you're cohabiting with isn't your husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you had, you're kind of truthful. I'll give you credit for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she says, "Sir, I see you are a prophet." Mm-hmm. And then what comes next? Our ancestors, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Change the subject. Right, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. right. So what does she do? She tries to start a religious argument mm-hmm. to take the attention off of her personal life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And our Lord doesn't let her get away with it. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, what he tells her is, the people will no longer worship in Jerusalem nor on that mountain, Mount Samaria, mm-hmm. because the Father is seeking worshipers in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. Now, that was revolutionary, and that's what I want to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Why, why do I say that was revolutionary? You uh, see, until that time, mm-hmm. religion uh, religion was tied to blood. 
Mm-hmm. There was a connection between belief and blood, between race and religion. Mm-hmm. Tribes, huh? Tribes had their god or mm-hmm. god. Mm-hmm. Regions, regions had their god or mm-hmm. goddesses. Mm-hmm. And nations had theirs. Mm-hmm. The reason I say region is if you read the Acts of the Apostles in St. Paul is in Ephesus, uh, he makes his great success and converts many, many people. Well, Ephesus was the center of the cult of Diana, mm-hmm. uh, the huntress. Mm-hmm. And the silversmith made a lot of money selling little silver or big uh, silver statues to the pagans, the statues of Diana, the huntress. Mm-hmm. Well, Paul comes, and many people turn away from Diana. Mm-hmm. And so this income, huh, this income of the silversmith is reduced. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, so they protest this. And it says there in the Acts of the Apostles, they went to the stadium and demonstrated and for two hours, you know, crying, uh, great is Diana uh, of the Ephesians. Mm-hmm. Notice, of the Ephesians. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean. When I said, until then, there'd always been this connection between a people and a, a god or gods. Mm-hmm. When the Spaniards arrived in Mexico, who did they find? How do Quetzalcoatl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quetzalcoatl. Mm-hmm. Quetzalcoatl. He was uh, the god of the Aztecs, mm-hmm. not of the Chichimex. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're told that uh, Juan Diego was a Chichimex. Mm-hmm or a Toltec, or an Olmec. Mm-hmm. And there were those various peoples, the ones that everybody knows are the Aztecs. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And anyway, uh, this is the way the human race was. Mm-hmm. And when our Lord said to that woman, <laughs> the people would no longer worship in Jerusalem or on this mountain. The mm-hmm. Father seeking worshipers in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. He was starting a revolution. Mm-hmm. There's one God. Mm-hmm. Uh, one God only, and all people are supposed to acknowledge uh, acknowledge mm-hmm. that one God. Mm-hmm. And it reached its culmination, of course, at uh, our Lord's ascension and at uh, Pentecost. Mm-hmm. Although, although there were times when our Lord warned his opposition. Remember the parable of the man who... Um, who had a uh, a vineyard? Mm-hmm. He sent his servants. Mm-hmm. He entered he, had, you know, he, he had planted a vineyard. He dug a, a wine press, and then uh, then he had given it to what to, to we would call you know, sort of sharecroppers. Mm-hmm. And then when uh, when it, uh, when it's produce time, he sent his servants to get it. Mm-hmm. And uh, what did they do? They killed him. Well. And then he said, surely they will uh, respect my son. Mm-hmm. And he sent his son. Mm-hmm. And then he, they, they killed him. They said, here, here is the heir. Let us kill him mm-hmm. and uh, take, the, uh, take the vineyard. Right. Which was insanity. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where do you find that anywhere in human history that if you mm-hmm. kill a man's son, then you get the inheritance. Get the inheritance. Right, right, right. It is insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then our Lord said, well, now what... Well, uh, what will that man do? And, he said, and they, they said well, he'll kill those wretched people, and then give it to someone who will give him the produce. Mm-hmm. And that was, a, and then our, uh, and I learned to use that parable to say, you are in danger mm-hmm. uh, of being like those those murderers. Mm-hmm. So he was already giving parables mm-hmm. about how. Uh, they would be replaced. Mm-hmm. Parable of the wedding feast, huh? The ones who were invited didn't come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the king sends people out to the highways and the byways to bring in the blind, the lame, and the, and the halt, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The ones who had been invited uh, uh, did not you know, wind up at the at the marriage feast, mm-hmm. but others uh, replaced them. Mm-hmm. So our, our Lord had been uh, hinting and warning, mm-hmm. uh, but then... Um, before he ascended, and he, he said to the apostles, huh, all power in heaven and on earth is given to me. Go teach all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. 
And just before he ascended and the Acts of the Apostles, he tells the Apostle, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Mm-hmm. Now, that began, uh, that began something revolutionary. And that's why, uh, and, you know, by, by the end of the first century, because the apostles had gone out, and others, not just the apostles, but there were others who were doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take, for example, um, Philip the Deacon. Mm-hmm. Remember? Mm-hmm. Ethiopian, mm-hmm. Uh, the Ethiopian unit. Yes. Uh, and uh, so uh, what was happening was that the people in all these other lands that the apostles were going through and others besides the apostles were going through, they were noticing there's this new, this new idea. Mm-hmm. This new idea that there's one God and everybody is supposed to turn away from their tribal gods or their regional gods or their national gods mm-hmm. and embrace it. Mm-hmm. And we know from the writings of St. Uh, Ignatius of Antioch who was, you know, was one of the first person I put to death in the New Colosseum in Rome, and that was around, I think, 105. Mm-hmm. That by that time, in his letters, he's using the Greek word to refer to this new thing that had come mm-hmm. from the land of the Jews, mm-hmm. the, the Catholic, the mm-hmm. Catholic, mm-hmm. the Catholic. Mm-hmm. See, when, when it, whenever you have some new religion, uh, there is some name that gets attached to it. Mm-hmm. You take, for example, you know, the uh, the, uh, the Pentecostal stuff got started around 1900. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mother, uh, when she was a girl, uh, the, the main headquarters of it was very, just a short distance from her home. Mm-hmm. And in those days, there's no air conditioning. In the summertime, you know, the kids would roam around, and they would go look through the windows and watching mm-hmm. people rolling around on the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what nickname did that inspire? You know, oh, no? the Holy ro- <laughs> Holy Rollers. Yeah. Holy yeah. Rollers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so often when there's, uh, there, there's something that's peculiar, mm-hmm. And that inspires the name. And what was peculiar to, to these followers uh, of this Jesus, mm-hmm. namely, they uh, turned away from their local gods. Mm-hmm. And all of them, regardless of whether or not that they were Greeks or whether they were Romans or whether they were Ethiopians, mm-hmm. or uh, they were, well, remember, all those regions that were named uh uh, at Pentecost, the mm-hmm. people from all those regions and the apostles spoke in the languages mm-hmm. of those regions. Mm-hmm. And so this is uh, what caught the attention of the pagan world. Mm-hmm. These people were universalists, mm-hmm. or in Greek, you know, uh, Catholic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, we have, unfortunately, in these trying times, following the Second Vatican Council, a fragmentation taking place. Mm-hmm. And it is really intense, mm-hmm. really intense right now in Germany. They are preparing a national synod. Mm-hmm. They are preparing to do a lot of things the German way. Mm-hmm. And what they're doing is they are talking about, well, there is the core. There is the core of our belief. So, that's Catholicism. But then you have these other secondary things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have these secondary things. And there, uh, these particular things uh, mm-hmm. can be different from the universal. Mm-hmm. And so this is what they're talking about changing. And one of the things that keeps men- being mentioned so much, in the, right now the president of the, the German uh, uh, Bishop's Conference uh, he cites ordination of women. Mm. See, to them, this is this is a secondary thing. Mm-hmm. And we Germans, uh, you know, we, we're no longer like our great-grandfathers. You know, in the old days, <laughs> do you know what the uh, terms were to describe the German woman? 
No. Which he, which he was interested in. Kinder Kitchen Kirk or Kirch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kinder's what? Uh, children. Children, yep. Mm-hmm. These, these are German words, huh? Mm -hmm. Kinder. Mm -hmm. Children. Mm-hmm. Kitchen. Mm-hmm. Don't have Do to translate that? that. Mm hmm And then Kirk or Kirsch, I forget what it is. Mm -hmm. That's church. In oh, German. Okay. okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that was what the, the, the life of a German woman revolved around the three mm -hmm. K's. Mm -hmm. That's all on go. You know, that's our that's our grandfather's, our great grandfather's mm -hmm. uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new Germany, mm -hmm. and women are no longer restricted to the three K's. Okay. And so they want um, they say it's time to start giving holy orders to women. Mm -hmm. And their justification is well, this is not part of the core. Mm. Mm. which is contradicted by the deposit of faith had. it's contradicted by the deposit of faith huh? well remember we talked about this once before and I told you about that book written by uh, that uh, French uh, French Jesuit who was teaching at uh, Sofia in Tokyo mm -hmm. what was his name he had an Italian name but he was a French Jesuit Something that has an I N I at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And the title, the title of the book is the Apostolic Origins, the Apostolic Origin of Priestly Celibacy. Mm -hmm. Apostolic Origin. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's periphery. It's something that came from the apostles. Right. Cochini. Uh huh. What's his name? Co Christian Cochini. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so there's a question: Who decides what is core, mm -hmm. and who decides what is <laughs> secondary? That's right. That's an important question. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and what they are saying is, we decide. Mm -hmm. Which can mean it's very subjective, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have we have a real challenge right now to uh, what our Lord said to that Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. The Father seeking worshipers in spirit and in truth. They've got their German idea. Mm -hmm. So that is what uh, I preach about uh, mm -hmm. last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, and we have to be careful. We have mm -hmm. to be careful. We we've, we've got people here in this country also. Mm -hmm. uh, they think, well, we Americans, you know, we we have insights that. <laughs> that the Universal Church doesn't have it. And so we mm -hmm. should go off on, on those tangents. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. In spirit and truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. I was talking with somebody recently, and she has a daughter who's a fallen away, mm -hmm. and she was trying to talk to her mother. And she said to her mother, well, I'm spiritual. But I'm not religious. <laughs> oh my goodness, Monsignor, that's the first thing I thought of when you when you read that verse. Worship in spirit and in truth. So if you're spiritual that's, but not religious, how do you worship? What is that? If worship worship kind of requires religious well, exercises. Well, you know, you know, to some people, what, what what spiritual means? It means turning the lights down low, and you have a bunch of scented candles burning, <laughs> and you have some kind of loopy music you know? okay. <laughs> that's that's what being spiritual is ambiance i, I, ambiance. I, call, it spir I call it spiritual gluttony mm -hmm. <laughs> your senses are, your mm -hmm. senses are yeah, taking all these things in mm -hmm. and i told her well tell your daughter <laughs> mm -hmm. spirit and truth spirit and truth and who is the truth mm -hmm. yeah the daughter isn't seeking truth mm -hmm. Uh, the daughter has rejected truth mm -hmm. because uh, she likes sort of this, you know, s spiritual sensuality mm -hmm. or this sensual spirituality. What do you want to call it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's what it is uh, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Truth is hard. Truth is very hard. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, really. I mean, you know, the, the scented candles and the mm -hmm. lights turned down low and the music. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what spiritual means to a lot of the, a lot of these younger people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, an evening like that would be pleasant for me, but if that took place of what occurs in my life every Sunday morning, I would despair. I would honestly despair. 
Well, it's because you are a woman of spirit and truth. <laughs> Thanks. By the grace of God. Mm -hmm. uh, Only by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Well, how long have we been talking? Well, I think we've been talking long enough for this week. My screen is dim now, so I don't know. Um, I don't know how many minutes, but I think if you close, that will make a great many people happy with your wonderful closing. And before you do that, I want to thank you again for coming to us again. I know you're struggling with your eyes and struggling with a whole lot of stuff. So I honestly can't tell you how much how much I appreciate you coming and our listeners also appreciate you coming because we love you, Monsignor. Okay. Let's say hello to the Taylors over there in mm -hmm. Karen Crow, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, fear not, little flock. It is pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. Amen. We'll see you soon, friends. Bye-bye.